Hi, welcome to Data Engineering. So today we are going to discuss about how to do the Kafka installation. So I have already made uh, what is Kafka, the introduction video of Kafka. You can find that video from my playlist link uh, in the description box of this video. Okay, so uh, Kafka is a MQ tool. It is mainly used in streamings and Kafka act as a data pipeline tool and it is not a processing tool. Okay, so before installing Kafka, what is the prerequisite? So uh, before installing Kafka, we need Zookeeper. So you might have already heard about Zookeeper a lot. So we use Zookeeper in Hbase, we use Zookeeper in Hadoop installation while while doing this Hadoop installation, and also we use this Zookeeper in Spark streaming as well, right? So Zookeeper is actually a cluster coordinator. Okay, so Zookeeper actually act as a coordinator. That's why the name itself it's Zookeeper. So before installing Kafka, we need Zookeeper. So Kafka when you install when you download kafka from the internet right so kafka itself has the zookeeper which we call it as an embedded zookeeper so that is completely for single node perspective so if you want to have zookeeper separately that means you download zookeeper tar file from internet and configure it and then separately you can download kafka and you can have it so that way also possible but that is what recommended in the multi node embedded zookeeper will work only for single node because if you try to have the embedded zookeeper in the cluster then then each Kafka node will maintain the metadata of the Kafka in its own Zookeeper so that it won't be in a shared state. So that means Zookeeper is, you can ask me a question. So why Zookeeper is needed for Kafka? Okay. I forgot to tell this. Sorry. So Kafka stores all the metadata information in the Zookeeper. That is where like zookeeper is required for kafka so how much how much message has been produced and how much has been cons consumed so all this information will stored as an with an offset value in the metadata that is in the zookeeper so in case of any message loss or something with the help of the offset id which gets stored in the zookeeper we can uh, recreate the data we can get the message back so that means now coming back to the embedded uh, with a standalone zookeeper so if you have embedded zookeeper in the multi node each kafka node will have its own zookeeper so that the metadata will not be in a shared state for other kafka nodes so that is where in multi node you need to have a separate uh, a dedicated standalone zookeeper that could be an, again a zookeeper multi node or single node but it has to be a uh, shared state for all the kafka nodes that is how you have to install zookeeper as a centralized one so in this video i am going to show you a practical of embedded zookeeper zookeeper with Kafka but I will tell you how to have a standalone zookeeper as well so the Kafka installation will not get differ between these two only the zookeeper setup and installation will be differ between standalone zookeeper and embedded zookeeper okay so if you are having a separate zookeeper you are downloading zookeeper separately that means this is the step so you have to download it and then you have to untar the zookeeper and then change your directory to zookeeper and again change your directory to conf you will be seeing zoo underscore sample dot cfg rename this file to zoo dot cfg by using a move command and then you can start the zookeeper server with the command zk server dot sh start so once you have done this you can you can test whether the zookeeper is started or not with the help of this jps command java process status the daemon name for zookeeper is quorum peer main if you see this then zookeeper is working so only then kafka will start else you cannot start the kafka server now you are once this is done you can go ahead and you can continue with the kafka installation whatever i have given in the line number 26 so this is where the steps to start your kafka's things okay but again the embedded one we need to know that as well right the embedded zookeeper is something that comes with your kafka package itself so now you have to download for embedded you have to download the kafka and then you have to export this means you sorry you have to untar this that is you have to uh, this is a compressed file so you have to uncompress this file and then you have to trigger this command so line number 22 so first you have to do line number 28 so you have to download the tar file and untar it and then line number 22 you have to start your zookeeper service so zookeeper iphone server iphone start at sh config slash zookeeper dot properties okay now let's do it in practical so i have my zookeeper already i have sorry i have my kafka which is already downloaded so i'll just extract this you can use any version of kafka so i'm using like uh, 8.2.1 2.11 kafka version okay so now i have just untarred my kafka so open a new terminal okay change your directory to kafka now you have to start your zookeeper the embedded one which is inside the kafka so just copy this command go back and then 
execute it. So you should not close this window because this is a service which will be running. If you want this to be executed in background, then you have you can use the Linux command nohup n o h u p and then the command and finally you can give an ampersand symbol and you can enter. So that means you can still close the window because the process will be running in the background. But just for you, I want, want to show you right. So that's why I'm just running it in the foreground. Open a new terminal, just run the JPS command. You will be seeing a daemon core MPR main that means zookeeper. Now what is the next step? We have to start Kafka. So here is the command line number 31 Kafka server start dot sh config dot sorry config slash server dot properties. So now this is also a service which will be running. You should not close your terminal or you want to if you want to run it in a background you can do it. Open a new terminal. Now you can execute JPS command. You will be seeing two demons quorum peer main which is zookeeper and Kafka is Kafka demon. Now what is the next thing? So Kafka works in the concept of topic, producer, consumer and topic. So topic is the one to which the producer will produce the data and consumer is the one which will again listen the topic, the same topic and consumes the data. So producer consumer is what the model of Kafka. It's an MQ, messaging queue system. Kafka is a messaging queue system. It comes under data pipeline. It's not a data processing tool. And this messaging queue will work like producer consumer module. So similar to like sender receiver module. Okay, so same in Hadoop we have Flume, right? That also works in the same way, but we don't have the concept of topic to which this producer consumer listens. But in Kafka, we do have that. Fine. So now I have to create a topic. So the command to create a topic is Kafka topic dot sh create zookeeper. You have to say uh, where the zookeeper is running. 2181 is the default port number for zookeeper and replication factor. So uh, Kafka supports the fault tolerant for the messages and for the partitions via the replication factor. You can increase and decrease. This is for testing purpose. So I I just gave my replication as one and that is the biggest advantage we do have one of the biggest advantage we do have in Kafka which is not there in Flume here we can have replications and I'm creating my topic as test so let me create this so once your topic got created yeah it's got created you can use a command to list all the topics so that is the line number 37 iPhone iPhone list and you are getting that information from the zookeeper which has all the metadata of of the Kafka right so now you can see like my topic my topic one and test we have three topics so test is the one which we have created that means the topic got created now I'm, I'm I'll be starting my producer so this this producer command and consumer command is for the testing only just to test whether the producer and consumer is working fine from the command line perspective terminal perspective but but what how really it works I will tell you later okay so what is the producer how in the real time and what is the consumer in the real time I will tell you by the end so let me copy this producer command so to which I will produce the data with the topic as test and Kafka port number is 9092 which is the default port number for Kafka so I will just trigger my producer here and then I will open another window for consumer okay so the command for consumer is like kafka consumer console consumer.sh and you have to give zookeeper and then because we are going to consume the data which is produced from the by the topic sorry to the topic right so this information will be get stored in the metadata so if it if it is a latest version of zookeeper you have to use this parameter called bootstrap server so for me this command will work 41 Okay, from the beginning is something like uh, the time when the topic got created and the time when the data got produced to the topic till that I need the data. So you can use from beginning. If you remove this from beginning and that means at when you are executing this command only then whatever the data got produced it will be consumed here. That's the difference. Okay, so I will start my consumer. Now it's like... Uh, just consider it's like a chat window like right hand side I have a producer where I'm gonna type something hi welcome so which will be get received in the left hand side it's like a two chat window message two messengers right so I'll just enter here in my right hand side you can listen here uh, like you can listen so hi welcome you can watch it here so in the left hand side you can see I received my message hi welcome so this act as an MQ so producer to in which the data will be produced the message will be produced and consumer will be receiving the data now in the real time how this works so you said producer and consumer is for testing but in real time I'll tell you you have Amazon Flipkart and the web UI path and you are just uh, uh, searching for some product you are doing some events like you are clicking a button you are showing some interest so this event will be captured as a data as a message and this this is where your data is getting produced and the producer will get start 
producing the messages and it will be sending to the topic test and then it goes to consumer so consumer is something imagine i have written a spark code within that i am invoking the kafka consumer Okay, so that means in I have written a Spark streaming code to which I have written a Kafka consumer within my Spark streaming. That means when the Spark code runs, it will consume the messages from the topic test and then it will do whatever the process you have written. Now this producer Kafka producer, there is a separate Kafka producer API which you have to write it in a front end uh, code, whatever it is. So whatever the uh, button they click, you have to grab the uh, messages and click events, right? So they have already written some JSP code or whatever ASP code some web application code to which you have to integrate this kafka producer code that means whenever click they click the button the kafka producer code will invoke and it will capture the message it will send it to the topic test and in spark we have written a kafka consumer api which will receive okay so that means the kafka producer and kafka consumer work with the technologies it's not gonna work just like an independent thing okay it work with technologies you write the kafka producer code in one technology the web technology and then you write the kafka consumer code in the spark or strom whatever it is okay so going forward i'll show you those demos and all uh, like i have a end to end demo i'll be showing you but this video is dedicated only for the installation steps for you and if you really like this video please do subscribe to channel and forward this to your friends and colleagues and i have given my linkedin and then instagram id in my description box and also you can find the playlist link in the description box in which i have all the big data videos and by order like lesson 1 and lesson 2 starting from what is big data to hadoop hive spark and kafka and many more and a dedicated playlist also there for kafka if you want only that you can have a, a visit to only that playlist as well yeah thanks for watching